friends, welcome to Andy's Audio Crap, where we talk about audio stuff in all of its glory. Today we have this carver, let's talk about it. First, I want to thank everybody who has uh, gone out to the eBay store and bought parts or records. Really, really appreciate that. I carry all kinds of parts for vintage gear. And uh, if you don't have what you're looking for, send me a message on a, on one of the listings and see if I have it sitting on the shelf just ready to part out. And if not, I'm also willing to buy, buy a unit so you can get your part and I'll deal with the rest of it. Okay, what we have here today is a model uh, C4000 high fidelity control console, which is a pre-amplifier essentially. It has uh, sonic holography, uh, I think that's, the appropriate way to say it. I don't know how an audiophile would say uh, holography, uh, but anyways, it's uh, it's that kind of amp, preamp. And uh, I tell you what, this thing, and for a couple of reasons, will probably be replacing my uh, C32 uh, Macintosh. And uh, I just don't deal with Carver a whole lot. There's There's a lot of it around here. In fact, a buddy of mine almost is exclusively worked on Carver for the last year. I think he said he's processed uh, 43 pieces just in the last um, 10 months. So lots of it around here. Uh, it was very, very popular back in the 90s. Uh, it, it's still very, very good stuff. And, and this is a uh, you know proof in the pudding, right? This uh, is before CDs. So this would be before like, um, you know, the mid 80s. Uh, so I think uh, this would probably be an 1980 type of amplifier. It did have uh, blocks, uh, amplifier blocks that specifically were built to go with it, set on either side of it. It also had rack system pieces uh, that went with it. The uh, interesting thing is that when Carver built these, uh, they did put like rack mounts on here but there's not really any slides. Like there's no, there's no slide to actually slide it into a shelf on a rack. Um, <clears throat> not that that's absolutely required. And they, they, they did have racks that fit these, but it was, it was kind of like, you know, usually there's screws to mount it to a universal rack, or usually there's a slide like um, Macintosh puts slides on all of theirs. and. It's just interesting that, you know, they, they really, they were doing their own thing and they had their own look and, and, and it was really attractive. Every piece that I've seen come through my buddy's shop is, has just been a beautiful piece and they clean up nice. This one came to me and she was pretty, pretty rough. I was, I was pretty sure I was buying a parts unit, uh, but turned out that it works just fine. There's no there was nothing that needed done other than cleaning it. It must have been in use uh, up until, you know, pretty recent. Anyways, so let's just work from uh, right to left on this one. And I'll just go through what kind of uh, features that you have here. Uh, you have the, the volume, of course, and the balance. Uh, the only knob that had any damage I put down here in the lower lower right, hoping that nobody would notice it. Your power button isn't distinguished among the buttons. It's just right here. Uh, there's a, our auto correlator, peak unlimiter, sonic hologram generator, time delay, and then there's a 35 millisecond that's linked to the time delay. I'm not uh, super, super familiar with all of these type of features, although I will say that this peak unlimiter is very likely related to this peak uh, and then if you go over here and you like move this up it starts peaking out and so that's that's pretty cool right i don't know what i would use that for but i'm sure somebody watching can put in the comments what the peak unlimiter was used for and then you have the holographic injection ratio you have the normal and then you have the theoretical and I haven't done much research on those. I know both of them sound absolutely beautiful to me. On the back, there is a uh, a uh, switch. 
let's see here if I can get this turned around without damaging it. There's a holographic listening angle switch, A and B. I guess this wasn't important enough to put on the front or maybe it just didn't fit, but they had two buttons that they could have uh, put on the front here. They had the, the phono loading and the holographic listening angle, uh, which of course ended up on the back. This is probably no more space. Uh, up here honestly there's a lot going on i haven't opened it so i don't know how busy that front panel is uh, i imagine it's really busy with all these knobs and dials and stuff so you have the time delay output and i i couldn't tell i think the time delay is potentially uh yeah it's its own outputs so this might be for like a rear channel uh, or or even a front channel depending on which one you want to delay so you have two outs that are, um, you, it says use either, they're both main. So you could actually have one, two, three outs on this thing. And that's a good reason right there why I, why I, I might be replacing the Mac is because I do have three sets and right now I have a set idle because my entertainment set and my listening set I have a set of speakers that neither are using and I really want to put them into play um, so anyways, uh, this, uh, right hand side here or left hand side, my other right. <laughs> so these are all of your, uh, select the selections. You have your aux one, two tuner, uh, phono one and phono two, phono one and phono two. I don't usually run two phonographs, but I could see how somebody might want to do that. Uh, just set this in the center and have two phonographs on either side and then have your amps outside of that so they can air but <clears throat> Yeah, I can see like I just changed my my cartridge honestly uh, just keep a, a whole You know box of cartridges just sitting right there not a box but a display of cartridges just sitting right there So when I'm playing rock I pull my rock cartridge out so on and so forth. All right, so you have your correlation um, Infrasonic and then you have filter, uh, you have your external and processor, you have your dubbing. So this is all your tape stuff right here. Dubbing, tape one and tape two. Now again, I am not quite sure what these do. Uh, they change the sound, I, I know that. Um, I'm not sure exactly how they work. I'm not definitely an expert in this. this is m more of a, a carver thing in, in from what I've run into. The Mac has some kind of, it's not, they don't consider it hologram, um, holography but uh holography whatever you want to call it uh they i think i don't remember what the macintosh refers to maybe it is holography but anyways <clears throat> it this one does a much better job at it in my opinion so the mac that i have it sounds great it, it does a cool job of making the sound feel like it's coming from around you but this does a far better job even on these small little crappy edifiers they're not crappy i'm sorry anybody who likes edifier they're not crappy i have a bunch of them actually i, I bought four sets of edifiers because i want to line them all up and see how they sound when there's four of them together because they do sound pretty good okay anyways um your right and left bass and treble are separated which is perfect for my space if you've seen some of my other videos you'll see that one side of my space is open and the other side is against a wall and this would allow me to you know differentiate those sides and how they're reacting to the space on on their flanking sides uh, then over here you have your tone control which is basically your tone defeat you're killing it and then you have uh, where the split is on kilohertz and then uh, your loudness so uh, right here is loudness then you have your DB trim. It's really hard to see that the way the carver put this together is just insane they, I think they if they had like Put the words on either thing. So if you can see below here every one of these silly things has a let me just grab the camera and show you Every one of these silly things has a label above it and a label below it and that just it, I'm a tall guy and every shelf that I have stuff on, I'm constantly leaning down just to see what's above the stupid button. Anyway, so you have your stereo mono output, uh, your your output. Uh, you can def you can do the uh, minus 15 dB, which allows you to fine tune your out, and then you have your speakers on and speakers off. So a lot going on here. 
Uh, I don't really want to drag the video out looking up and explaining what every one of these does because I know there are experts watching that can explain it a whole hell of a lot better than I can. So please go and read the notes uh, or comments uh, for that matter. Uh, all right, and then there's this LF calibration right here. So God knows why this is on the front and not on the back. Um, one of the other things that this has that the Mac doesn't have, and I, I recently reviewed a, um, a Pioneer 9500, and it just goes like off the hook on this stuff, but it has phono loading. So you can take and milk, excuse me, oh my goodness, there was breakfast you can milk a little bit better sound out of uh, a cartridge so you can take like you can take one of these nice um <clears throat> what is this an, an audio technica uh, 3600 and you can actually milk some better sound out of it by playing with the different phono loading and i think there's phono capacitance i can't remember if this is there's two different types and that 9500 if you watch the video on it it has both of them and uh, i've played with that thing and it is just absolutely killer uh you can take you can take one of these crappy ass cartridges okay so i have tons of cartridges right uh, you just run into them as you do this more and more and more you're just gonna get a pile of cartridges going on and my favorite one uh so far is the ortrophon uh, red or blue I can't remember which one I have but it sounds absolutely beautiful um, but I can make this sound like that just by screwing with these so for those of you who are in search of the perfect cartridge maybe maybe you need to pick up an amp with these settings or preamp with these settings beautiful stuff love this stuff all right with that I'm gonna leave you guys I did not review this very thoroughly. Uh, the last comment I would put on here is this is probably going to displace my Macintosh uh, just because I, I absolutely adore how this thing makes the music surround me. Thanks for watching.